Welcome to MAT 2LB, booklet number three, decimals, percent, and tax. Lesson number three, converting between percents and decimals. So our first lesson in this unit, we learned how to add decimals. So we were working with decimals. Second lesson was an introduction to percents. And now we're looking at a third lesson that talks about how do we convert between these two different ways of um, expressing a relationship between numbers. So we're going to start by looking at the first example. We're trying to express 58% as a decimal. And there are two steps for this. There's actually just, it's kind of one step. And the second step is just writing your answer. We're going to take whatever our percent number is, so the number in front of our percentage sign, and we're going to divide it by 100. So if you have a calculator, that's fantastic. I'm going to be typing mine into a calculator. So we're going to take whatever number was in front of our percentage sign. In this case, it's 58 and we are going to be dividing it by 100. And when I type that into my calculator, I get 0 decimal 58. And that's really all there is to converting from percents to decimals. So we'll try one more together just to see if we can internalize the step a little bit, and then you can try some examples on your own. So let's have a look at A. Express 19% as a decimal. So first step is to take the number in front of our percentage sign, which is 19, and we are going to be dividing it by 100. In a lot of ways, this is the same as saying we have 19 parts of our 100, as if we've written it like a fraction, and we've actually just done the act of dividing it, which the fraction bar means when we're talking about math operations. So we have 19 divided by 100. We type that into our calculator, and we get 0.19. So you should be typing in these calculations along with me on your own calculator. Now's the time to try one on your own. So what I'd like you to do here is hit the pause button, try B. When you think you've expressed 87% successfully as a decimal, come on back and we'll see how you did. Okay, you've tried 87% as a decimal. We start by taking the number in front of the percentage sign, dividing it by 100, we type that into our calculator, we get 0.8. Seven. Let's try example C. Same thing, I'd like you to hit pause here and give C and D a try. When you think you've got 36% and 5%, both expressed as decimals, come on back and we'll see how you did. Okay, let's have a look at C. 36%, we start by writing the number, 36, divided by 100. That's going to give us, when we type it into our calculator, 0 decimal 36. So 36% expressed as a decimal is 0 decimal 36. D has a little bit of an additional challenge in that we haven't yet worked with a percentage that has a single number as the number in front of the percentage sign. So let's see how that looks when we type it into our calculator. So we're going to take that number in front of the percentage sign. There's our 5. We're going to divide it by 100, and when we type it into our calculator, we get 0 decimal 0, 5. So I say this is a trickier one because I don't want you to panic because there is an additional 0 after the decimal place. That is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Let's take a look at this whole process in reverse for the second half of this lesson. So we started by taking a percentage, it started ex figuring out how to express it as a decimal. Let's work in the opposite direction now. If I give you a decimal, how can we express it as a percent? We just do the exact same procedure but in reverse, doing opposite operations. So let's take a look at example number two. Express 0.41 as a percent. First thing we do is we take the decimal, 0.41, and we multiply it by 100 which is the opposite operation to what we were doing earlier, which was dividing by 100. So when we type this into our calculator, 0 decimal 41 times 100, the answer we get is 41, and we can't forget the right notation, which is the percent sign. So 41%. So if we're trying to go from a decimal to a percentage, we multiply by 100 to gain back that idea that we're talking about some portion of 100 parts. Let's have a look at A together. Express 0 decimal 505 as a percent. So we take the number, the decimal, 0 decimal 505, and to make it into a percentage we are going to ex multiply it by 100. 
and when we type that into our calculator, we end up with 50.5%. Now some of you may be wondering, is it okay to still have a decimal as the number part of a percentage? That's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't want you to attempt to round this unless the, unless the question asks you to. You just leave it just like that. So let's have a look at B together, and then we'll try a couple of these on our own. Express 0 decimal 2, 3 as a percent. So we start by taking our decimal, 0 decimal 2, 3, multiplying it by 100. That will give us, when we type it into our calculator, 23, and we must remember the proper notation, percent. 23 percent. Hopefully this is starting to feel good for you. Let's have a look at C. So at this point I'd like you to hit pause and try C on your own. 0.66 as a percent. When you think you've got it, come on back. We'll see how you did. Okie doke. Let's have a look at this. We take the decimal. 0.66. For this process of expressing it as a percent, we're going to multiply by 100 and that will give us 66 percent when we type it into our calculator. We have one more example to finish up the lesson. Express 1.50 as a percent. Seems odd, we haven't seen a decimal quite like this yet. Have faith in the system, give it a try on your own. Come on back when you think you've got it. Okay, let's have a look at this. Despite the fact that we have a number that's larger than one and everything we've looked at so far has been less than one, Let's follow the procedure, which says take the decimal we're given, which is 1.50, and multiply it by 100 to get that same decimal expressed as a percent. So when I type this into my calculator, I end up with 150%. Is it okay to have a percentage that's larger than 100? Absolutely. In fact, I'm sure that you give 150% in every math class. So there is no trouble whatsoever having a percentage that is larger than 100. This takes us to the end of lesson three. If you are feeling good about this procedure, head right to the worksheet. If you'd like to spend some time listening to portions of this lesson again, please do so before you head to the worksheet, and I'll see you in lesson number four.